In this tutorial, we're going to import vectors from a different CAD drawing software package, which come in the file format of DXF. We're going to take a look at the properties that can be imported with some of these types of vectors and some of the problems that you may encounter along the way. We're also going to take a look at cutting mortars and tenon style slots on a CNC machine and how we can overcome them by using the filleting tools within the software. So let's begin by opening a new copy of the software and we're going to create a new file and it's going to be a single sided job and we're going to go for a width of 42 inches, a height of 38 and a thickness of three quarters of an inch. We are going to work in inches and we're going to select the Z0 position to be off the material surface and we're going to be working with XY datum position in the lower left. Once we have these parameters simply press OK and we can start working with these vectors. Now there are various ways that we can import vectors into the software. We can simply open up our local file browser and drag and drop the file into the work area and they will be loaded into the software. We can go to File, Import and Import Vectors and we can use the shortcut of Ctrl and I. Or we can use this option here to import vectors and we can find this icon underneath the file operations of the drawing tab. I'm just going to use this icon here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate through my tutorial folder and find the three-legged table underscore files folder and find the three-legged table dot dxf file. Now the DXF format is quite a common format for CAD drawing programs but we also do have a variety of different file types that we do support here are just the ones that we support here as you can see. So we've got uh, SketchUp files, we've got AI files for Adobe Illustrator, Inkscape and many more. So simply select the DXF file that we've uh, given to you in the tutorials folder and we're just going to press open on that and that will then import those vectors into the software. Now at the moment you might be thinking where are the vectors? Now that's a very good question. Now the software will load in any positional data that was saved along with the vectors from the previous CAD drawing program. Now if it wasn't for the clue here where we have vectors that are just in the lower left hand corner which are presented there and selected it might be hard for me to know where they are. So if we just scroll back a little we can get a view of the vectors that we have imported and we can sort of get an idea of what has happened here. So I've chosen to work with the XY in the lower left. So you can see my work area is on the working from the lower left and outwards like so. Now if my uh, in the previous drawing program I had my XY in the center and I decided to create my vectors in this by straddling these two parts of the quadrant here and then I saved the vectors and exported them like that. That is why the software has imported them the way it has. Now not all the time will we always get a glimpse of where the actual vectors were in the first place. So what we might need to do in that situation is select all objects that have that are basically on and available in the work area whether that's in the white drawing area or in the gray uh, outer space and then basically select them all by going to edit, selection, select all vectors and then we, what we want to do is we want to center that then into our working area which is the white area here. So how we would do that is we could either press F9 on the keyboard or we could come to the align selected objects with them selected we just select this one here which will align it to all axis and sides like so. And then we can just zoom to fit so I'm just going to Select that button here to get a closer view of our vectors. Now along with positional data when we import vectors we can also import layer information as long as the file format supports it. So if we just take a look at the layers drop down we can see that we have actually imported layer information as well and we've got four new layers including our original default layer of layer 1 and out of the four layers you can see that three of them have vectors on them. Now we can tell this by looking at the third icon along. This icon here represents that we have vector information on that layer. And if we go up we can see these other two have as well. And we can get to layer 0 which has also been imported. We can see that that has nothing inside this icon here. And that basically means that there's no vectors on that layer. So in this instance we may just want to delete that for organizational purposes. So you can just right click that layer and select to delete, like so. 
Now we can see which vectors are in on which layer by simply double clicking on this icon. So you can see if I click the base part, we highlight the base area. If I double click the vertical parts, you can see those are now highlighted. And if we select the top part, you can see all those vectors here are also selected. Now layers are a really good way to organize our work. And they really do start to pay dividends when we get around to the toolpathing side of things when we're using things like toolpath templates and also vector selection within the toolpath. And those are covered in various other uh, tutorials. Now if you want to have more information on layer management itself there is a video which I will link to in the related videos section of the tutorial browser. So I won't go into too much detail here. So I'm just going to click off the layers tab now. I'm just going to click in the white space just to deselect any vectors there. So now it would be a good idea to think about how this is, product is actually going to go together. So I do have an image of the three-legged table itself and this is basically just a 3D preview of how it all should sh uh, slot together. So we do have our three legs here which are all slotted together. Then they're held in place by the base part which has a mortise and uh, antenna arrangement on the bottom and then we also do have the tabletop which also has the mortise and tenon style arrangement at the top here as well. Now it's always good to think about how we're going to machine this on a CNC before we do go ahead and actually go to the toolpath section as we may need to make edits to the vectors before we go and do that. Now I'll just shrink this image here and we can go through some of the reasons why we might need to actually edit these vectors first. So one of the first things to think about is the size of our mortise and tenon slots. Now the tenons are going to be dictated by the thickness of the material or whatever material that we actually leave off if we are going to plane that material thickness down. So let's imagine that we're not going to do any planing of the material, we're just going to use three quarters of an inch material like we set up in the job these tenons are going to be th three quarters of an inch high. So we need to make sure that our slots, our mortise slots, are going to be able to fit a quarter of an inch size tenon inside it. So if we just select one of the mortise slots, you can see down the bottom right hand corner here, and I will annotate that, you will see that it reads that it's two inches wide and has a height of three quarters of an inch. And that's perfect. But what about if we had just all of our mortise slots that were on an angle like this and our width and height is reading this value down here. Now that value is in actual fact the bounding box that surrounds that vector. Now if we go into the measure tool we can actually get an exact figure by s selecting two points and measuring in between. So if I just select this node here and I wait for that icon to change to the other node you'll see that the distance reads a three quarters of an inch. So it's perfect and they're all perfect. But if it came to the fact that we were using and we only had different size material available to us we would actually need to resize all of those uh, mortise slots manually. So now that we've thought about the size of the tenons and the size of the mortise slots that we're going to be using that they should fit together perfectly what we need to think about now is that we are actually going to be machining these with a round tool on a CNC machine. So if I just zoom in a little on one of the mortise slots, I can just demonstrate to you here the type of problems that we might incur or we are going to incur whilst machining a square with a round tool. So for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to create a circle quickly with a diameter the exact same size of the tool that I'm predicting that I might use for this type of job, which would be a quarter of an inch uh, end mill. So I'm just going to draw that here like so. And what we have to imagine here is that this is our end mill. So imagine that I'm driving along here and I'm machining away and then I get to the corner and because I am confined to machine within this rectangle vector boundary I am going to be left with material left on all of the corners due to the radius of the tool. So you might think you could overcut the slot and then that would just uh, remove that from ever being a problem but then you got to think that the tenon is then going to be really loose in that mortise slot. 
So there is a method within the software which we can do to actually alleviate that problem and that is the creating fillets tool. So if we go over to the edit objects part of the drawing tab and you'll find this option here it says fillet, create fillets between spans. So if we just click that we can choose the type of fillet that we're going to use. So you can have a normal fillet, dog bone fillet, t-bone fillet and a drag knife fillet. Now the two that we're going to be using today are the dog bone and the t-bone fillet. Now this one for this example we're just going to use the dog bone fillet. So that's already selected for me and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this the tool radius that I'm going to be using. So I'm using a quarter inch tool and just need to put in an eighth inch radius like so and then what I do is take the mouse into the drawing area and you'll see that we have this icon representing our mouse currently and that's basically just to say that we have the create fillets tool active. So then what I do is I simply take the mouse over in between where two spans intersect like so and you'll see that we should get a little tick appear. Now when that appears that means we are able to put a fillet here. So if I click you see that we've now inserted a dog bone fillet into that corner. And what you'll also notice is the quarter inch circle that represents the end mill you can see how that would fit into that dog bone fillet that we've just created to basically remove that unwanted material in the corners. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly fillet the rest of these on this mortise slot. I'm just going to close this and remove the circle that represents my end mill. And what I'm going to do is simply select this rectangle here and I'm going to create a copy of it and then just sit it inside our newly filleted rectangle. So I'm just going to select it again to put it into transform mode. I can then hold ALT to drag it in line with itself or in line horizontally or vertically. I'm just going to drag it over this way. And then if I hold CTRL down before I let go of the mouse, it will then create me a copy like so. So if I just zoom in a little, you can see if I just align that a little better, like so, that now our square corners fit perfectly in our filleted rectangle, like so. So I'm just going to hit delete on the keyboard to delete that and hit F on the keyboard to zoom to fit. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to just zoom into this selection here and I'm going to go back into the fillet tool and I'm just going to go ahead and fill it all of the corners of the other mortise slots, especially now that I am very aware of what I need to do to edit these vectors to make them machinable and actually accept a tenon inside each one of these mortise slots, like so. Now if I just zoom out, we'll see that we also have more uh, mortise slots over here, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the same again to all of these, like so. Now if I ever found that I was adding a fillet to something that I actually didn't want to add a fillet to, it's very easy to undo a fillet that you've already created. Now how you do this is simply hover over a fillet and you'll notice that straight away you have now an angled symbol uh, where the mouse cursor would be and a cross. So you simply press the left mouse button while you have that and it will remove that for you. So I'm just going to add that back in and just add the rest of these fillets like so. And I'm just going to put the view back like so. Now the mortise slots themselves are not the only things that are going to actually be suffering from the fact that we're using a round tool to cut these shapes out. The tenons themselves are also going to be a problem. So if I just close the filleting tool and I zoom into one of the tenons like so and again I'm going to draw my representation of a quarter inch end mill. Just going to pull that there like so. And you've got to imagine now that we're profile cutting out this shape and this tenon and I come to this corner here and again I'm going to have leftover material left in this corner here. Now what that's going to do is when we actually go to slot that in to our mortise slot that's going to end up sitting above the height that we desire it to be because of the fact that we actually want the uh, tenon to go all the way in to level with the rest of 
this profile cut here where in actual fact it'll actually probably sit around here where it starts widening out and that extra material is there. So again we're going to have to create some more fillets on all the uh, corners of the tenons. So again let's go back into the filleting tool and just fillet that there and you'll see that now that end mill is going to fit nicely into that corner and also when we come to uh, put the mortise and tenon slot together then we're going to have a perfect match and it's going to sit flush against the top level of this cut here. So I'm just going to put a fillet there, I'm just going to zoom out a little so I can see a bit more of the vectors that we're going to be filleting. So I'm just going to fillet all the ones here and if you're following along fillet these ones too like so and just fillet all of this side like so and then the last one, the last leg, so just fill it all these and I'll just zoom out a little bit and I'll just leave it like this so you can see roughly whereabouts that I have filleted on all of these vectors here so you can copy these as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly just go in here and just delete my circle vector like so and I'm just going to press F on the keyboard or select this option here to zoom to the active drawing limits. And there is one more thing that we actually need to think about. Now, not only do we have these tenons here slotting into these mortise slots, we also have the fact that these three legs of the table are also slotting together as well. So they're also going to suffer from the same problem. The fact that a square corner can't fit into something that's been cut with a round tool within the original boundary as we are going to be left with that additional material. So in these slots we can try something different. So we can go into the create fillet tool and instead of a dog bone we can actually use a T-bone fillet. Now with the T-bone filleting tool we have two options of the way we actually want to create the actual T-bone itself. So if we just hover near a corner on this side you'll see that we have that symbol up which means it's going to give me a fillet there. Now what we can do as well, we can do it so it goes up long ways, so we get a fillet here, like so. And the use for these differ depending on the type of corner that we are filleting, but I'm just going to go ahead and fillet these ones with that type of T-bone fillet. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that to the rest of these, like so. And fillet here and there, and that then is all the filleting that we actually need to do and edits that we need to do to the vectors before we go ahead and actually machine them. So I'm going to go ahead and save my work. So I'm just going to close out of here and click File and Save. And in my tutorials folder, I'm just going to save this as three underscore legged underscore table underscore drawing, like so. And then we can use this now with the toolpathing companion video, which I will link in the related video section of the tutorial browser. And thanks for watching.